Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. The Raspberry Pi is a small, affordable and versatile computer board that was developed to promote computer science education and experimentation. It has a compact size, various input output ports and supports different operating systems. By default, the Raspberry Pi's official operating system, Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian, installs with all forms of remote access disabled and you will not be able to connect to any Wi-Fi access point and remotely access it. By following this video, you can create a headless Raspberry Pi that is ready for remote access before you boot it up for the very first time. So let's get started. First let us head over to the Raspberry Pi's official website. From here you need to download two softwares. One is the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can download the version suitable for your operating system. I am going to download for Windows. The second software you need to download is the operating system. You can download the latest version of this Raspberry Pi OS. I am going to download the legacy version which is suitable for all the previous versions of the Raspberry Pi. You can also download the light version. I am going to download the desktop version. This may take few minutes to download. I have already downloaded this. Let me use that for writing the software. First install the Imager. After the installation, you will get the Imager's window like this. Now you need to insert the memory card. You can use a 16 GB memory card of class 4 at the minimum and insert it to the card reader slot in your computer or you can use a external card reader. Here in this window, select the operating system. Click on choose OS. Go down and select use custom and direct the path to the downloaded file. In this storage, choose the inserted memory card and before clicking on the right button, you need to take on the advanced settings. Click on the wheel icon here. Here in this window, you need to create a new user account for the Raspberry Pi for the first boot up. And also, you need to enable the SSH. By default, this may be deselected and create a user account. Let me create with the user account as user, password as user as well. Next, you need to configure the wireless LAN. You need to specify the details of the Wi-Fi access point you want to connect to. I am going to connect to this hotspot which I have set in my cell phone and the password you have set in the hotspot. That's it. Click on save. Now click on the right button. So ask for erasing and writing all the content. Give it as yes. This may take few minutes to completely write and validate. Now the writing and validation process is complete. You can eject the memory card. Now insert the memory card in your Raspberry Pi and power it up. After the booting process, it should have connected to the selected Wi-Fi hotspot. Let us check in our cell phone. Let's check for the devices connected to our hotspot. If you see the connected devices, one device connected which is Raspberry Pi but the IP address assigned to it is a IPv6 address. We cannot use this in our uh, SSH applications like PuTTY. You need a IPv4 address. How to get that? We need to use an application. Just head over to Play Store. and download the application called as uh, Net Analyzer. After opening, just do a scan of your current network. Now the Raspberry Pi is connected to this hotspot. So this should be available in the scan. As you can see, the Raspberry Pi which is uh, Edimax technology the IP address assigned to that you can see 192.168.206.205 Now we can use this IPv4 address to connect to it remotely through SSH protocol. For that let us use the PuTTY application. Just install the PuTTY application. Since I am connecting via my laptop, I need to connect this laptop also to the hotspot. Let me do that. It is connected now. Let me use the PuTTY application with the host name as the IP address of Raspberry Pi. 
which we got in the net analyzer application as 192.168.206.205 and the port number 22 click on open it will ask for the security alert click on accept it is asking for the login username the username we have set while writing the raspbian os into the memory card was user and the password was also user click on enter this is what the login we are successfully able to login into the raspberry pi let me do ls and check after this let us do some configurations in the raspberry pi the configuration required for graphical user interface access through the application called as vnc the command used for that is raspi-config you need to use sudo go to interface options here enable vnc select uh, yes and hit enter the vnc is enabled press tab to move on to the various fields move on to the finish and uh, hit enter the vnc server is started in the raspbian operating system now to access the gui of this raspbian os we need to use the application which is a vnc player on this website you can download the official version of this vnc here you make a new connection give the username of the server it is the ip address of the pi username can be any name click on ok this is the instance created in my vnc application in my laptop computer double click on it click on continue now give the username which is the user we have set and password also user click on ok this is what the gui window of our pi which is same like our display connected gui you don't need any physical display device and also keyboard and mouse you can connect to raspberry pi os remotely like this and you can access it and you can do the programming that's all for this video if you like this video please share and subscribe thank you